I've always been obsessed with things. But just being consistent with one obsession, I think that's the key. If you love this more than other stuff, why would you balance your life doing other things? The leverage and the output you have is much greater if you're very, very good at one thing. I'm the CEO of Viral Tacos, fast growing chain of restaurants in Atlanta, Georgia. So we're doing authentic tacos with high-end ingredients. There's no science and amazing margaritas. 100 million a year revenue, that is our, our next goal. I can't read numbers better than words. Like, I can't read a book, but I can read charts. I want to know the percentage of everything in the company. Percentage for the company rent, percentage for the company payroll, percentage for the company corporate payroll. As long as I know every percentage and we maintain the quality, we're going to grow. I was born in Uruguay and then came here when I uh, was nine years old. We landed in Jersey in a not so good part of town. It was tough. Saw people get stabbed the first week in the States. We got broken into. Eventually moved to Atlanta, Georgia. Not once I thought about going to college after school. Right after graduating high school, I got a, I got a job in sales. I was working at a kiosk in a mall. Pretty much spent 10 years of my life inside of malls. This is one of them. So it was a weird feeling coming back. Then we would sell hair tools, hair straighteners, curling irons. You will stand here and you will walk around all day and look for customers. I'm probably make a sell right now. I think I still got it. Within about a year, I was already training people and managing. After that, I was a regional manager. Eventually, I was able to buy the entire company and I just kept growing it. Had these all over the Southeast. 19 at once was our biggest operation. But I was growing something that was going downhill. Anything under a hundred bucks that can be sold on Amazon has taken a big hit. Especially the way people shop nowadays. They're not going to the mall. They're rather just buy online, including myself. I mean, there used to be kiosks all over here, everywhere. Kiosks, kiosks, downstairs, everywhere. They're gone. The business went from being profitable to eventually, oh shit, why are all my cards uh, maxed out? Oh, why am I I'm struggling to pay sales tax this month? And that ball continued rolling. It's like owning taxis and then Uber comes along. And you're like, no, it's fine, let's go. And as that industry went away, I was working more, making less money, then working more, then losing money. It was like 400 grand in debt at one point. You can feel so much pain through business. It's breakfast time and you can't eat. The food will not, you can't swallow. You can't go to school and learn that. Hey, right before you might go bankrupt and lose everything, you're not gonna be able to eat. That's not in the book. Nine years, every day. Every day. I would never give away another 10 years of my life and have nothing to show at the end of the journey because there's no enterprise value in the company. You basically own a job plus a whole risk. I'd rather own a business. Some of them, I close them down. Some of them, I give them away. Some of them, I sold them for nothing. But once I was at zero, I had peace. And I could create something new. I started realizing that there was a hole in the market of restaurants that were ran the old school way, doing a million plus a year in sales. Imagine with some marketing, social media, and so on. This is uh, Real Tacos number one, the original location. We acquired this one in late 2021. And within 60 days, we double sales. And then 90 days, we triple sales. Exactly eight months after that, we go for the second location. This is location number two. We renovated the whole place in 28 days. We would do all nighters. We would operate during the day, and then, then we would stay all night doing construction. The most important thing and the way we move is the speed of execution. We just move, move, move very quickly. We don't waste any time. We open the same day that we open, we got the keys to location number three. This is one of the locations that literally put us on the map. Opened that one the same day that we opened that one, we came to this one, location number four. Amazing success on this one as well. 
But right along the way, we started implementing partnerships in the company for all of our chefs, uh, managers, bar managers, and so on. Every day I go around and ask people at the restaurants if they're making money, because I know they're making money. That's something I'm proud of. We have partners that have been working for a year making 150 now. Imagine when once the most people get to like 250 a year. Can we do that with one, two, three, ten people? We'll do it with a hundred people? Who knows? And having um, so many partners per restaurant and paying dividends every month is probably the greatest fulfillment that we have in the company. Imagine one day we go public. How many millionaires, tens of millionaires, were in the company? That'd be cool. That'd be amazing. Yeah. The plan right now is one location every three months. We've done it for a year now. We're on track to keep doing it. I don't hang out, go out to dinners, other people. If you're holding a, a winning lottery ticket, just go to the store and cash it. But well, why would you do anything else? Now, our trip to the store might take five or 10 years. Why would I do anything else? It's a once in a lifetime chance of cashing in a lottery winning ticket. And that's what this opportunity is. I don't think we know the ultimate goal yet. We just know we want to run to 100 million a year. Being profitable, zero debt. I am obsessed. <laughs> so maybe I just want people to get inspired by this. It's okay to be obsessed. <laughs>